Welcome to another episode of I Hate It Here, where Sam and I spend approximately 90 minutes hating the world so you don't have to. Uh, Sam, uh, as always, I feel like we, we use this show as a conduit to hang out and talk. I know you're hating the world because uh, you've uh, you've had an old man, your first old man hangover. That's oh, not my first, but uh, trust me, I've experienced, but I made, I, have to, I made a mistake of not drinking enough fucking Baraka before bed, but... <laughs> literally yeah I, it is but i if i'm super wrecked i have to have two barakas but one when i go to bed and one when i wake up but i forgot to have one mm. before i went to bed i had one when i woke up two day hangover but in bed uh, shocking shocking you gotta you gotta watch out for them two day hangovers they're really bad like because it's like the pro it's not just the productivity and all that you lose it's like I almost feel there's a point on day two where it becomes like perpetuating, like if you don't force. Oh yourself. yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I'm yeah. not getting out of bed. I'm not having food, so I'm literally just sat in bed, yeah. no water, no food. But it's like, I feel yeah. ill. It's like <laughs> yeah, you do, you man. Can't. You're fucking dry as fuck, and you haven't had anything. But I can't get out of bed. Why? <laughs> oh. absolutely pounding, and it's got nothing to do with a boost. Now you are just legitimately dehydrated. Yeah, it's in that. Trust me, mate. I've, you you really have to get a you know you have to take stock of your life i think when you're locked into day two day two's the the heartbreaker like if you commit to staying in bed for a full day you'll be ill for a oh, week oh yeah you're fucked like you are fucked well listen i've, I've been as you can see i'm i'm fairly spry fairly fresh no hangovers here just been working just been busy because so, you know, drinks every what I have, I have cut out sugary drinks, and, and you know, and I feel loads better. Sugar, that's the that's the one you want to cut out immediately. Doing loads of cocaine and Adderall, but uh, <laughs> doing that like. But, uh, mm. So anyway, look, I, I, I'll I'll start us off gentle, Sam. I'll start us off gentle because I know we're doing these regular now, so you know you don't want to. You don't want to use all the gold immediately, but you know we always like to throw in a bit of seagull news because we're getting. We're getting closer, I think, to a crucible in the great seagull problem in Britain with seagulls terrorizing everyone on beaches and in cities. And let me tell you why, because it's actually happened in Dublin now. You know, like usually when we do these news stories, it's always like some tiny little tatty town, you know, yeah, like yeah. Port Talbot or you know, no one cares. Oh, so what if people who live in Port Talbot are terrorized by seagulls? So what if Splash World is closed? You know, fuck people in Neath. You know what I mean? And it's like, we just get, you know, it, it, it's part of the big gull paradigm that people who live in small towns, you know, towns in the Hebrides, an old man trapped in his house, can't go out shopping, you know, for his, you know, wife who's on her last legs. No one cares about that. You hear that and you go, yes, but under the 1984 Protected Birds Act, like, fuck that. Like, he's he's got a dying wife to look after. But, you know, you live in a shit little town, so nobody cares. Well, Dublin is a, a major city and... Uh, Mate. You know, yeah, Sorry, but I just saw the picture, but I'll carry on. Fucking hell. <laughs> as well like no, I, i'll talk about that a bit as well like this is how you know seagulls are mental do you remember did you ever see photos like this me when you were growing up but, you didn't but, did you yeah like, in just... fucking horror movies but in fucking yeah, exactly. war of the gulls or something what yeah the fuck alfred that? hitchcock's the birds Mate, like... look at the little i don't know is there any like animal experts what are the little you see my mouse there what are those little yeah, they yeah. look like tiny teeth but they're not like right at the back of the throat but what the fuck do they do, but? I uh, who knows, man. Who they look knows like little pincers, but is that what they are? Maybe it is because they chuck the shit down their throat tonight, so they must have something to. Do. Yeah, maybe the Umbrella Corporation has been breeding. Now maybe that's what's happened. Like basically, <laughs> like the fucking the G virus got out into the fucking seagull, you know, community. But anyway, look. So it's been happening in Dublin now, and uh, a, 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 a Fianna. Fail, I'm not pronouncing that properly. I can't do Irish Gaelic, it's tough. Uh, anyway, uh, counselor has said it's time to cull the gulls as birds wreak havoc in the sea. <laughs> <Why is laughs> cull the gulls actually become a sea in No, it lit me. Call, call the, the gulls. gulls. Call the gulls. Call the gulls is actually, it's trended. It's becoming <laughs> a thing. Like, so, you know, as always, I hate it here is at the cutting edge of everything. But anyway, uh, Fingless Ballymun counselor, Keith Connolly, 
has called on Dublin City Council to look at the possibility of culling seagulls. Seagulls are currently a protected species under European laws, but exceptions can be made in certain circumstances. We're definitely at that point. I want to make that abundantly clear. Like, they're stealing people's dogs <laughs> and, and attacking <laughs> people's babies. Like, we're, we're there. We're, we're at the point, right? Anyway, there has been a steady increase in gulls around the areas of Dublin City, with some people even being forced to move out of their homes. Eggs and nests were removed from Balbriggan in May 2017 in an effort to control the seagull population. Councillor Connolly said that the, the noise the birds make is a serious disturbance in itself before any act of violence he said there is a serious issue with seagulls in the city there's been a steady increase in the population and the noise pollution alone warrants a cull i have dealt with situations where nesting has forced people to temporarily move out of their homes i can't even process that like can you imagine right like seagulls are on your roof you can't do anything about, you have to move home temporarily fully no. squat as right to do like yeah, like absolutely never. I would never do that. I would never do that. I would admit I would tank the fine. I'd tank a prison sentence. Fuck them. You want me and my family to move up my fucking house because there's some seagulls upstairs dive bombing my kid's eyes out of his skull every time he tries to go to school. I don't fucking think so. What's, getting, what's the rules as well? But like, if a seagull's dive bombing you, what, there must be retaliation allowed. I, I must no. be allowed an umbrella, but an umbrella put, minimum. Put, like, put it this way. Put it this way. If a human was dive bombing you off the roof, you could. Get get a few digs in and claim self-defense the seagull dive bombs you you just got to take it on the chin like literally like you just have to let him peck your beard off that's that that's your life because they moved into your house nah this is bollocks like i'd be on google bollocks. but looking up loopholes like okay i can't touch it but what if i like set up a, a crate fill it full of fish Put them in the crate, move the crate, put it put it on a shipping container, but open the crate in the middle of the sea. Uh, well, yes, home. yes, the the crate defense. Yeah. I'm sorry, they've got, they've got you covered there. Like they probably, of course they have. They will have the. It, it's it's gone too far. I'm about to demonstrate how it's gone too far. Big gull is a real thing now. I'm actually utterly convinced about it. But, but anyway, you know, it, it it's uh, you'd have to go on the dark web and hire a fucking gull hitman. That's like where we're at right now. You would have to hire like some sort of gull assassin, like, you know, meet in a bar all shady, like, oh yeah, that'd be five hundred pounds per gull. Like, yeah. Do you want the eggs as well? Or you know, you have to fucking do it like that. It's ridiculous. But anyway, uh, I have dealt with situations where nesting has forced people to temporarily move out of their homes. The bacteria from their feces you see, we haven't even, we've never even talked about that on this podcast the bacteria from their feces is a lot more dangerous than dog excrement and we have also had situations where sea and herring gulls are robbing food directly from people's hands now the the excrement thing yeah is, I, I don't know about that but i sound that's sounds, true i don't know yeah but think of how what think of how much shit you see at like either like boats or stuff at sea or like near the beach just covered in seagull shit but you ever heard anyone dying from it? Like, yeah, well, I have actually, because I was watching. Oh, I can't even remember what it was now. There was some document. You know me, I, crippled with insomnia, and I'm a bit of a melt. And I'll watch any old shit, and I've just got a head full of useless knowledge. I watched some documentary, and it was about like uh, sixty minutes how, on bird shit. Yeah, it was. Yeah, no, it was about the his, It was about like the history of resources and um, and guano. Right? Oh and, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, it used to be it used to be like a resource that they used to use. Like, yeah. um, didn't they use it for concrete? It's rock hard bird shit, right? And no, it was it for the sand. nitrates. Right, it was okay. the nitrates. And so what what they realized was at some point this is like probably the seventeen hundreds, eighteen hundreds. I don't know, but uh, they basically realized that like if you put bird shit on a on a on your crops. In oh, a field yeah, of your crops, yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 you would get a bigger yield of crops than you would from a non-bird shit crop, and so because of the nitrates, so people there was this island that was all populated by like, yeah, birds yeah. and bats and everything, and they used to send people out on this boat, yeah. and they'd be there digging all day, like yeah. just scooping up giant, you know, loads of bird shit, just launching it into containers. Think about that. And, like, they would all get... They were all fucked. They were all, like, riddled with disease. Loads of people yeah, would yeah. die on the boat journey back. And in the end, it was so much of a resource for so long. I think the people who owned the island, I can't remember which nation it was from the documentary, they, like, basically stopped them 
They, they they said, right, listen, this is way too valuable, this bird shit. <laughs> so we're, yeah. we're, we're, keep, we're keeping that. But that's what they used to do. So, and, and the thing is, mate, those, those guys were fucked. There's so many diseases. I mean, first of all, you just got uh, you just got your salmonella. That's just there, obviously. Um, but then you've got something called uh, cytokosis. I think it's pronounced. I've heard of that, isn't it? Where yeah. You, well, it, it sounds a lot like another disease, maybe, where your brain starts... Well, it ain't good. Remember. Yeah, it ain't good. Uh, well, you if get, it's got it's, corsis in it, mate, <laughs> you know, it's not good. It's anything <laughs> yeah. that ends in corsis, you can keep that. Yeah, it is true, mate. It's true. But yeah, sight of corsis, I think it's, um, it gives you like some horrific like pneumonia thing and then probably go mental and die probably with the courses in there it's a anymore. cytokosis uh, i must do something in yeah. the blood right cytokosis p-s-i-t-t-a-c-o-s-i-s oh, okay. c-y-t-o no no cytokosis. not this. nah yeah not, no, not like that so honestly it's it's it, you know it, he's right about the shit he's right it's gotta go like again <laughs> and they're, they're pooing everywhere you don't pooing down your chimney pooing in your gutters Pooing on your doorstep, pooing on your windows. Yeah, it's mental, actually. Uh, you know, so so does that. Uh, you know, we all we all laugh when a Greg's past. He gets swooped away. That is funny. You know, like uh, that is a bit of banter. Like, but at the end of the day, it's different when you're down the beach having a holiday and someone's you know it's your chips, right? But like, if it's on your own doorstep and you're just like trying to have a, trying to have a munch in your garden, that's outrageous. Anyway. Getting back to this, I have written to the CEO of Dublin City Council, Owen Keegan, to ask if the possibility of a cull in some areas could be examined in conjunction with the Department of Heritage. I would also urge people not to feed seagulls as this escalates the problem. Uh, Sinn Féin uh, representative Louise O'Reilly previously told News Talk that gulls were becoming a health and safety issue, and she stressed that gulls were making life miserable for many Dubliners. Deputy O'Reilly said, I think it, that's her, that's Louise. I think it's serious because it's a public health and safety issue. I live in a coastal community and we have an issue around urban goals. The population is increasing. We know that they're coming in from the sea. I have people living close to me who have seagull nests on their roof. They can't sleep. I have a constituent, this is mental. I have a constituent who has 18 nests on her roof. Her life has been made absolutely miserable. <laughs> 18 nests. Like, what? Oh, mate. Like, one is bad. Like, 18. Um, that's before you even get to the obvious problems caused by seagull waste. We know they damage property and keep people awake from around 5 a.m. in the morning. Like, no. Nah. Mate, I would cave my own roof in. <laughs> I've set fire to my house. It's not my yeah. bad. Yeah, it's seriously like oh, just a, just a little accidental fire. Bye, mental. So anyway, the same week that comes out, as obviously you know me, I'm, I'm mentally ill as well. I have a news feed for seagulls now, right? Um, the same week that comes out, there was an art. There was an article in a, there's this uh, website called the Conversation. And uh, it's like journalistic think pieces and academic think pieces and debate and discussion. And, you know, so that's why I read that publication. Well, look at this. <clears throat> why you should have more sympathy for seagulls and how to stop them stealing your chips. Big gull at work. Coincidence. Dublin say they're going to have a call. Oh, deploy the opinion. We all love about, goals. Oh, seagulls are the yeah, seagulls are the real victims. Like, look at them as well, the manipulative fucks. Like little baby seagull. Yeah, oh yeah, they're great when they're like that, aren't they? Great when they're like that. Great they're not they're doing not... crime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> sound sound like a conservative back you know. <laughs> you know. Well it's ridiculous. Like look, it, it's it's just it's just sort of everything they say about them, it's all positive. Like look. Gulls living in towns are very adaptable and savvy. They even learn patterns of human activity to decide where and when to forage. These are not good things. These are not positive qualities. These are why that they're such they a menace. Stalk. Yeah, yeah, that is yeah. a good news. Yeah, and then listen, this guy as well, like big gull, part of the problem. I designed a study to test this idea about, you know, them uh, 
going back and forth and nowhere else. And timed how long it took goals to peck a sealed bag of chips I'd placed on the ground in front of me. For you're feeding making, the goals! Yeah, you're making it worse, you man. Yeah, I know. Feed them what? fish, but why are you yeah. giving them chips? Chips as well, like... There's no way that's good for a seagull either, but this guy's trying to be pro gull and you're feeding them chips. Like, that isn't part of a fucking normal yeah. diet like 200 years ago, but they weren't just eating chips. I mean, they probably were, actually. Britain's been along for a long time, like, but you know what I mean. It's yeah, not as yeah, they intended. Yeah. Put it this way, mate. I, I studied the Victorian era at school. There was nothing about seagulls eating chips at school. So <laughs> never came up. Is it, anyway, and he goes, so I did a test. Once when I was looking at the seagulls and once when I was looking away, I found the gulls took longer to peck at the chips when I was watching them. I also found gulls are attracted to food they see humans handling, probably because they have learned we often leave food waste lying around. No, but do you want to know why? Do you want to know the reason why? It's called imprinting, but it's because seagulls now rely on us so much for food that they look at you and see you as a similar thing to them because they know whatever you're eating, they can eat. That's what it is. It's mm. not a good thing, but eventually on a long enough time scale, what if we don't have food? They're fucked. They don't know how to get food anymore. All the seagulls in a city probably have never gone to the sea to get fish. Like, mm. imagine if you get a pet seagull and then just put them into the wild. That's basically what's happening. They're so used to just getting bin food that if the bin food disappears, they're fucked. Yeah. And then it ends with, gulls' behaviour may seem bad, is bad, <laughs> objectively bad across the board, but we have a lot of scope to change it without resorting to extreme measures. Gulls are making the best of a bad situation caused by <laughs> our own activities, and our towns may be their last refuge. They need to find somewhere else. Like, that's that's thing, all yeah, I'm we saying. need to start teaching them where the fish are, but like, <laughs> yeah, the fucking, exactly. we, they can't rely on bin food forever. Yep. And then, same week again, right, in the esteemed publication, Times and Star, right, ignore the scare stories, gulls are just behaving naturally. But then, oh, they weren't doing this. That's what I mean. Is but me, that's what, How long have seagulls relied on humans for food? Because I know, like, back in the day, fishing boats, but that's, that's a different, they're eating fish, but, you know what I mean? I know they used to, like, circle around fishing boats and wait for any scraps, but... Yeah. Yeah, that's fish, or but they're at sea. And then look, <laughs> these attacks are usually exaggerated by the media and are very rare indeed, but inevitably lead to calls. To I don't think they are very rare. Not according to my news feed. I see one happening. I, I, I see a major seagull attack every week now. Minimum. And that's by no means an exhaustive list. So, yeah, see, big gull at it again. So it is time to call the goals. If Dublin go first, everyone else is going to join. <laughs> That's all. I'm Thing saying. is, I don't want to kill any animal. Really, I don't want the solution to be to kill them. I don't I just, want it either. But to come on, not be like. There's got to be a way, but it's got to be a way to start removing the imprinting. Basically, you've got to make them scared of humans again without harming them. That's the trick. Like, they've got to be worried of going up to humans and stealing food, but also at the same time, we haven't got to, you know, you kill a load of them. Here's the thing. I think seagulls, if, 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 think of it like a war. We go in, we hit them hard with one big cull. <laughs> As if you're trying to drop Nagasaki on gulls. <laughs> what are you on about? What are you on about? Like? We hit them hard with one big cull, right? And they'll be like, well, can't fuck with humans no more. They, they, they've won that one. Like, yeah, but you'd have to do it everywhere. They don't. They haven't got Twitter, but you'd have to do it in every region of the no, world. No, but like they, they must talk. They must communicate. <laughs> like, with each other. Yeah, maybe locally, like maybe like within May I don't know a few yeah, hundred miles. Yeah, they, but they they migrate and move around. Word will get around. Nah, I don't think it will, but I think it will. Like I think that's where we're at. Same way they say, "Oh, look, there's some chips over by there." And like, chips, chips, and they, they hear that there's chips, and they go there. But obviously, well, you don't want to... They're calling them. They're pushing back. Right out to sea we go. Ah, ah. And that's that. Problem solved. Did we ever get an update on the old fake eagle or fake peregrine falcon one? Remember where they were putting it, up no, fake it, eagles and falcons in places? Yeah, it hasn't, it hasn't come up in my feed. The last thing I saw was that actually, uh, again, it was more big gull propaganda. Uh, the last thing I saw related to that was they've realised one of the net positives of having seagulls raid your town is that uh, they can use seagull flight paths to for optimal drone flight paths. 
So when Amazon basically droning out pizzas or whatever in the future, like, <laughs> it's all going to be predicated on seagull what, tech. What's the point? Drones have cameras on, would not they? Surely you could just look like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. That makes no know. sense. Well, that's what they're doing anyway, apparently. It's, again, probably propaganda, probably nonsense. Who knows? Um, anyway, that's what's going on with seagulls. Now, here's another little follow-on. Uh, you remember we did a story last episode about uh, the woman who got fined unbelievable amounts of money for bringing a subway back. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, it, it, it's a common, it's happening more and more. Uh, th this is the uh, story about McMuffins, right? Hang on, let me just get this. Oh, yeah, I got the old, uh, not the yeah. old. Why do they? Why does that change? I think it's because they haven't done their GDPR thing still. All uh, right, all right. Well, we'll put a pot timestamp. Yeah, yeah I got it. I'll get it on the archive. I'll just wait. It's just put. It's just putting it up now. It's always these local. Is it like a local paper? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, like local papers. Because I, I think it's because they can't afford to yeah, comply exactly. with yeah. all the GDPR stuff. You know, I was and devastated. They just don't give a fuck because the only people yeah. who usually click on it are the people who live in their area in America. So who's ass? Yeah, who is ass? Still going. Here it is. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'll put it there. Do you want me to just go right from the start? You can we'll go easy. from the um the intro yeah, of I'll... "Remember the Woman yeah, yeah, Who Got Fired." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we had a, you remember that story we covered last week about the woman who got fined a fortune because she left a Subway sandwich, half a Subway sandwich yeah, specifically, yeah. in her bag. Uh, well, it seems to be the type of thing that's happening, All people are doing this all over the world. This one probably trumps it, actually. This is a story about how a passengers got fined $1,874 because they found two, this is this, this term is ridiculous. Two undeclared McMuffins. <laughs> Have you declared your McMuffins? Uh, and this was a passenger who was traveling uh, from Bali to Australia. Again, Australia with this shit. And, and uh, how they fucking got... well staffed is Australia's airports, but everyone right. else can't get a fucking bag on a plane. But Australia's finding McMuffins and subways and everyone. But how are they doing it? How are they that good at it? But I don't understand. How have they got the time with the people? I know. Here's, the, here's, here's a tangent for you. When I was doing my little tour of, uh, of America, um, I didn't just lose time because I got Rona again. We got that New York Rona, right? <laughs> but uh, I, 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 uh, I lost a couple of days because they just cancelled flights. Oh, yeah. And it was some, it, and, and like, put it this way, I've been flying a long, long time. You know, I'm an old man, right? 39, forever. And uh, been flying a lot, and um, you know I, I can count. Probably, I could up until recently I could count the number of cancelled flights like on one hand over the span of my life. Right now in America, like it's you're just rolling the dice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and they all said the same thing: oh weather. Right now, keep in mind they cancelled a flight to like I can't remember where the fuck I was going, but yeah, from like New York to like fucking somewhere on the west coast. And they cancelled it on the basis of bad weather, right? And it was a, a heat wave. It was beautiful. So, like, it was, it was the heat wave when I was out there in New York. Record temperatures. Right? Not a fucking cloud in the sky. Just sunbeam. What weather? Like, what? Too warm to fly? Yeah, is that, mate, a thing is that a thing? Too like, warm to fly? Maybe. And what it is, is, what it is, airlines, if, right, you see, if an airline cancels it because they're bad. And by the way, the way they cancelled this flight, right? The way they cancelled this flight was outrageous. 15 minutes before we were due aboard, the plane had landed. It was getting, you know, it was being de it, it had deplaned or whatever the fuck they call it. And all the crew were cleaning that. And 15 minutes before we are due to get on it, they said, oh, your flight's cancelled. Well, right. So, and then I was like, F for, for what? And they went, adverse weather. <laughs> all right. And then you look into it and it's like, if an airline cancels a flight for adverse weather... They don't get fined. All right. Okay. Right. Um, th there's actually funny enough that they're talking about making making changes now. The current administration, because like they are taking the piss. There's absolutely no way 
that was anything to do with weather conditions canceling that flight. So, but yeah, I, I, I agree with you, man. You go to like a, you go to America, like you know, fucking, I, like put it this way. I was told absolutely, like you've got to be vaccinated, get your vax proof, you've got to have a PCR test, do that twenty four hours before you go there. They'll turn you away. They don't give a fuck. Let straight in. No one looked at my yeah, paperwork. They I didn't check. Did, didn't even ask me if I was vaccinated. Just couldn't be asked. Like, yeah. And it's like, listen, I've got no beef with that. Like, you, you literally, you're super nice dude. Like, the agent just said, like, good, uh, welcome back, Richard. You know, salute that. Wicked straight in. But yeah, it's like in Australia. All right, okay, uh, get out the McMuffin dogs. You know, like, what the fuck is going <laughs> on? So like, are you, like you, you found you found an undeclared McMuffin in my bags. Like, how? Like, who are who are these agents? Like. Muffin squad, I can't deal with it. Like, it's fucking <laughs> ridiculous. Anyway, a passenger traveling back from Bali uh, found themselves paying a hefty price for a McDonald's breakfast. The unnamed traveler was handed a fine of uh, $874 US dollars after two undeclared egg and beef sausage McMuffins and a ham croissant, oh, yeah, well, fully ordinary, like, oh. were found in their luggage. And by the way, as well, like, think about, like, uh, think about an egg and beef McMuffin and a ham croissant you've got from McDonald's. You leave them in your bag. What, what are you taking them for? Like, like they're not going to be just good to eat. Like, surely. Yeah, yeah. Was, but, but why even put them in a bag, though? It makes yeah. no sense. Anyway. Uh, the incident came about days after Australian authorities brought in tough new bios. I mean, it's, they've, they've elevated the game. It was already mental in Australia. They've elevated it. Uh, after a foot and mouth disease outbreak in Indonesia spread to Bali, a popular destination for Australian tourists. So the Australia's Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry have said there's a range of undeclared risk products, which includes fast food items. And me, I, I, I've actually nailed it. Look, uh, look at that. They uh, literally well. did have a McMuffin dog. A biosecurity detector dog. What you're saying is a dog that smells food. <laughs> yes, also known as dogs. <laughs> this fine was twice the cost of an airfare to Bali. But this, <laughs> this I have unreal. no sympathy for people <laughs> who choose to disobey Australia's strict biosecurity measures and recent detection show you will be caught. All right, Robocop. Like, fucking hell. Like, fucking hell. No sympathy. No sympathy for someone who's had to pay twice their fucking plane ticket price for a Mackie D's sausage and beef. McMuffin sausage. Also, man, if they're worried about this foot and mouth disease coming in on fucking McMuffins, but don't people carry foot and mouth? Isn't that the worry? Because like? people don't can get so. foot and mouth disease. I don't I don't know. I don't I think I swear so. you that... can. Yeah, because it's like ulcers on your inside your mouth and on your feet. I think that's what foot and mouth uh, disease yeah, is. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right, like you're right. So like he could have foot and mouth, but but <laughs> you're killing the McMuffins. I don't know I don't know about this though. I don't know about this. Hand foot and mouth disease. Yeah. Right. And then it says it's a common childhood illness. Like maybe it a does happen. sheep, yeah. like I've heard common. Of it. Yeah. Someone I know recently had a hand foot mouth disease. Had all ulcers on the inside of their mouth. No, like ah, never happened to me, like. Yeah, I've never had it either. But never happened to me, and I lived in absolute squalor. So <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, who, who were these people? Like uh, you know, getting down and dirty, like uh, fuck that. But um, no, anyway, yeah, so Australia still had it, like two grand, <laughs> two grand for a McMuffin, reasonable, you know, because foot and mouth's a thing. And yeah, turns out humans can have it as well. I've, we've learned something. Also, while we're on the subject of uh, paying a hefty price <laughs> for fast food, uh, what about this, mate? This, this story is absolutely unreal. This is, again, Australia. Um, come on. That, yes, there it is. Uh, right, a man uh, is suing a Christmas market because he claims that a ham roll he bought from the market has made it so he can't stop farting. He can't stop. Well, but he said he had it in 2017, so he's waited five yeah. years as well. He's like, fuck, this is lasting a while, like... He's had oh, five, after five, years, five of years, he's managed to narrow it down to an arm roll like he had a Christmas mark. So this is at news.com, an, an Australian publication, uh, talking about the UK man, 46, Tyrone Prades, 
who says uh, he cannot stop farting after eating a ham roll in 2017, and he's launched a legal bid for $350,000 worth of damages. Uh, he says the snack sparked life-changing flatulence. This is going to be a tough one to get through this one. It sparked life-changing flatulence, which wakes him at night and embarrasses him in public. The flooring company boss had severe tummy ache <laughs> within hours of eating at a Christmas market, then was bed-bound for five weeks. Fucking hell. According to his lawyers, like, I've had some bad food poisoning, as we know about. And uh, there was a time I got that norovirus and had to get in the bath, which we also know about. But five weeks is ridiculous, surely. He and others who ate at the same stall were said to have been infected with salmonella. His ordeal began when he visited the market in Birmingham. Now, this is the mad thing. <laughs> I've been to that Christmas market, Lord. I love that ham roll. <laughs> <laughs> Never had a ham roll. But anyone who anyone who knows Birmingham Christmas Market, right? And I fortunately I was living in America then, or I would have been there in 2017. Um, they right basically, they you go there, it's all like sausages, you know, big sausage stalls, crepes, yeah, and uh, and beers and that, you know, and it's like you walk around and you know, oh, it's so festive. And it's there for a few weeks, basically. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've been there loads. I you know, lived in Birmingham for years. And, uh, you know, the idea that there's ham dangerous ham rolls, it's, it's just ruined it for me. I won't be going this year. Is that a no, thing I'm, I'm, that sorry. I have heard or, like, seen those probably, it was probably a fucking Channel 4 documentary of people mm. who have got a disease who just can't stop fighting. I have heard of that. But can that oh, be yeah, caused yeah. by salmonella, maybe? Maybe this guy's legit, like, maybe we're laughing, but he's actually serious, and he's waited five years. You know, you know what, this is yeah. fucking ridiculous now, it's been five years, I was in bed for five weeks. I'm not unsympathetic, but, like, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on, and you can tell, we'll get to the end, and then All you right. can tell me whether, he, yeah, whether it's fair or not. But anyway, so he, he uh, within hours of eating a ham roll, he had stomach cramps, fever, vomiting, and diarrhea. Like that. I mean, that by the way, is about what a nightmare it's come on that Cold red immediately. Like. Oh, that is like yeah, exactly. Like there's bad news, isn't it? His lawyer said he was sick for months and was still flatulent five years later with churning noises in his gut. He went on. The claimant continues to suffer from excessive flatulence, which causes him a great deal of embarrassment. The symptoms are primarily fatigue, altered bowel function associated with churning within his abdomen, and the flatulence. The claimant's stomach continues to make frequent churning noises to such an extent his sleep is disrupted. You're getting woke up by the bubblies. You know. Right? Uh, the extent of his symptoms have been life-changing, the lawyer concluded. Uh, the stall was closed and deep cleaned following public uh, public health England investigation. So it is legit, like, they did fuck him up. Uh, and now he's suing the operator, uh, Frankfurt Christmas Market Limited, for £200,000. They deny blame. Its barrister admitted council environmental health officers found E. coli on a knife, but no salmonella. And he pointed out that Mr. Prades had, had not claimed it was an E. coli infection. The allegation the bat was contaminated with salmonella bacteria is not admitted and must be proved. The case will now go to trial. Now, by the way, I, I do want to throw that out there. Like, as a defense, like... I know. Uh... Yeah, it's a, bit, it's a bit of a naughty one, that one, isn't it? Like, God, I didn't no shit there, in but... your food. I yeah. pissed in your food. You yeah, there was no salmonella see. there, bud. There was E. coli everywhere. <laughs> Not a lick of salmonella. salmonella. Yeah, exactly like that. So how, how are you going to prove it five years down the road? I reckon, yeah, but if it's going to jury, I mean, surely they'd have the same opinion as us, like, okay, maybe it wasn't salmonella, but you almost certainly did give me call, like, but the thing is, if he, imagine if he is, I don't know about the farting, that's what I think. If he's in court, but he's ripping farts, you will court. I reckon he's winning, like. He's going to have to come ready, like, because I'd be letting him off as loud as I could. You know what I mean? That's fucking instant proof, but... You can't submit his ass as an exhibit. Of course you can. 
So what's, what's well, no, it's just subliminal messaging to the jury, but like the old time, the, the defendant saying no, he's lying, it was only called like, am I lying? Am I yeah. just let him off? I mean, like, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I, oh, mate, I, I'd love to. And, and the judge to, can't say anything. It's like, right. it's literally a medical problem, but that's why we're here. You can't say, shit, you need, you need to control yourself. I can't. <laughs> that's why I, I need 200 grand. I'm, I'm going to fucking look into this because, like, if, if it's in Birmingham courts, like, I'm, you can go <laughs> and attend. Like, I, I might do live coverage of that because that's like, I mean, like, What's he going to do? How's he going to prove it? Like, and, and on top of that, what, we're going to interview people. Like, he's going to have to get people from work. Oh, yeah, Ty, Tyrone's farts are fucking stinking. Like, are you, are you, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. it's just such a bizarre case. And I can say, the defense, um, yeah, well, we did have E. coli on all the knives we used. But no salmonella is, like, so <laughs> mental. Like, it's so mental. The kitchen objectively got closed down and deep cleaned after an investigation into unsanitary practices as well. Like, you know, so fair enough, it's a bold strategy, I like it, you know? Yeah. That's lawyers, they, they live in a mad, mad world. But yeah, anyway, so we're at the end. Do, do If you judge Sam, is he getting his grand? I'd have to, uh, if he farts in court, I reckon he's having a butt. If he's literally all the time farting in court, then I reckon they'll give it to him. Otherwise, are we really going to prove it? Yeah, it's true, like, it's true. Now, while we're dealing with uh, unfortunate health problems... <laughs> I saw this just today. I, I literally couldn't believe it, mate. Like this is this this all. This is your kind of news story, right? So <laughs> this is like this is a story. Man develops swollen head after day at the beach and stuns doctors, right? And basically, it, this was mm. a, a man in and a man in Turkey called Kena Arik. He was just out there chilling in the summer on in, down by the Black Sea, right? And as he was just walking around, his head just starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? It just keeps growing. His face is growing. His eyes start sealing up, right? His face... <laughs> I just laugh. He's shaking with his head. And... Um, Anyway, he's he's he can he can feel it like he, it's like you know, but like he feels feels fine, but his his head is his it's head is like his, his eyes are swelling up. Anyway, it's like an ultra rare condition, right? Which you only usually get on your extremities, your feet, and your hands, and it's basically heat edema, right? Now, obviously, edema is you know when you get a build up of fluids, and it's a reaction from your body where you know if you have if you get too hot. You you get build up a fluid in your hands. Now right. I've heard of it. I've I've heard of it in hands. You know, you get balloon hands. Seen it in feet. You know what I mean? Again, it's still rare, but like you know, you you've seen it. But on your head, on your fucking head. That's mad, right? Yeah, on your head. So that, that means his whole head is like soft. Well, not soft. We mean like fluidy. So you could push on it, and it leaves like a. a, a oh yeah, 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 like... yeah, like, yeah, like he's a balloon. Like. Fucking hell! <laughs> like he, the thing is, oh, it's too much. Like. Cause did you ever play a fucking um, theme hospital? No, I know of it, but <laughs> I never why, played it. This is why it's killing me, though. Cause there is a, there is a disease in it called bloaty head or something, right? Hang on, I'll show you now. It's ridiculous, and you have to de you have to uh, deflate their their heads, like, and it, he looks like that, mate. It's fucking done me, like. Look at that. It's too much, but. <laughs> it's too much. You know, it basically it's a disease that turns you into Steve Bruce like, <laughs> in the game. So anyway, this poor, this poor bastard. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll read it. You see here that we have never encountered such a case before, said emergency medicine specialist Dr. Abdullah uh, Hockergill. After excluding the causes of localized edema in the body, we decided the swelling on the forehead uh, was, was a heat edema and we started treatment for this immediately. Uh, it's usually caused by expanded blood vessels brought on by high temperatures. Um, uh, so what, this is the thing that people aren't talking about, global warming. Are we all gonna get, yeah, are we all going to get hit with, a, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, rising sea levels, you're all talking about that. You're all talking about, oh yeah, no water, you're all talking about that. What about having a swollen head? Or you're just walking around and you've got bloaty head from nowhere. 
That's the real danger, Sam. And then yeah. your rats fit anymore. What are you going to do? <laughs> Can't even hide from the sun anymore. It's just going to keep getting bigger, but... End up being that alien guy that no bitches me. No bitches. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No bitches. Full on Mega Man. <laughs> Living the dream. All right, here you go. Here's something that'll terrify you. You'll you'll appreciate this. Um, This is, this is just... Like, the, this is why, I mean, this isn't why, but like, you know, I've said before, I was going to say, this is why I don't date no more. No, that's because I'm fat and repulsive. But, no, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, like, I feel, I've said it loads, I, I just don't know how anyone out there to date, like, the, the whole dating game just seems mental. Like, it just seems so crazy. Like, me and my other mates, we have this, um, we have this Discord where, like, you know, because some of them are, like, single lads and that, and, like, they, they will occasionally, like, just post, like, I, I'm, I'm I'm having a swipe, look at that. <laughs> and it'll just be something, like, absolutely, it's just outrageous, like, it's just madness. Like, you you know, you can't believe that anybody would pitch themselves in the way that people are pitching out there. And you can tell that that's a nightmare waiting to happen, but obviously someone's going to go in for it, aren't they, eventually? And it's just, like... Just the concept of Tinder in general always blew my mind. Like, essentially, like, fast food sex anywhere in the world. Like, Uber Eats, but for getting laid. You know, and and and, and also just, like, ah, man, you, you read articles about, like, you know, um, people who ghost people. Have you seen this? And, like, people want to make that a crime. What? And then also, if you, you want to make lies, ignoring people a crime, is that what they mean by ghost? Or do you mean like not yeah, showing yeah, up like when, so date? like yeah, basically, if you go up, if you go up on a date and you have a one night stand essentially, and then you blank them for the rest of, the rest of the time, right, okay. There was like some movement to get that recognised as like a, a a crime, like a sex crime by deception, and also as well, I think it was actually passed into law in New York State. If you lie, if you say like I'm a millionaire. And someone has sex with you, and then you're not. You're just like, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think we did that on the show before. Yeah, yeah. We, I think yeah, exactly. We did that on a previous episode. Um, then basically, like that's again, you've obtained sex by deception. It's a crime, and it's like, oh, what the hell? So you're just dealing with so fucking much. Like, like what can I, what you know, what can I, what can I say about myself? Like, everything's a nightmare now. The the impersonal, you know, uh, you know, apps process. Also, as well, like to be fair, because I'm probably looking at it from a predominantly male point of view. I also follow a number of Twitter accounts that like publish like men's DMs to women, and it's like, oh, it is fuck. mental. Oh, yeah. but yeah, uh, like you, you can't you can't believe that people are like this. Like, so it's like, don't get me wrong. When I say it's a nightmare, I don't just mean for guys. Although we are about to get into a predominantly guy centric story, I recognise it's a nightmare for everyone. Like, uh, you know, the the the, the internet. And the app culture and modern dating and, you know, just a fucking, you know, it's just like, it's just exhausting. It was just so easy, like, in, you know, in, in, in my day. Like, you know, you met somebody. Back in my day, you met yeah, him at church. Day. Yeah, you met him at church. Uh, you said, listen, uh, you know, we will have to get married immediately. I love the Lord. Yeah, exactly. And they would go, yes, me too. Do you like my gingham dress? Yes, I do. Gingham is my favorite fabric and then that's like a music genre but the fuck is gingham uh, sounds like I, a I'm scottish not, fucking edm genre i'm not even sure like uh, that it's uh, get that fucking gingham on uh, <laughs> gingham is a medium weight balanced plain woven fabric typically with stripe <laughs> check or played duotone patterns in bright color and in white made from dyed cotton or cotton blend yarns. There you go. <laughs> That's exactly what I meant as well yeah. when I said it. Like, um, Anyway, so here we go. Like, like here's, here's the horror story. So uh, uh, the, the headline is, One date and now I'm being sued. Woman sues man for $10,000 for standing her up on a date. Right? You know. A Michigan woman who sued a man for $10,000 for standing her up on a date got into a heated argument with the judge in a scene captured on video. Uh, Kashante H. Short filed a lawsuit on September 10, 2020 against her date who didn't show up. According to the claim filed in the 67th District Court of Genesee County, the experience caused her emotional distress because the date fell on her dead mother's birthday. 
whatever. I'm not getting into it, Sam. During, <laughs> during a just over nine minute virtual court hearing or uh, via Zoom, Judge Herman Marable uh, informed Short she filed the lawsuit in the wrong court. The case he told her should have been filed in a circuit court. After that, the judge asked the defendant if he would be representing himself. To be honest with you, sir, I thought this was just going to be thrown out, he told the judge. We had a date, one date, and nothing else after that, and now I'm being sued for $10,000. I don't think this is going to go any further, and I think it's a waste of your time. In the video, the judge said that if the man thought the case should be tossed, he would have to file a motion to dismiss. Uh, if he responds and the, his response is a lie, then it's perjury and my documents can prove it's a lie. Short started yelling. No, no, no. Do you understand what perjury <laughs> is? The judge responded. Please do not insult my intelligence. Do not do that, Short replied loudly, as if I don't understand what perjury means. At one point, the judge ripped his face shield off as the woman continued to shout. Wait, why have they got face shields on on Zoom, but I can't spit might be, through the camera, but There might be people in I the guess, yeah, true. court, you know, like, whatever. Be quiet while I'm talking, the judge said. Bottom line is, you said it's a criminal offence what he did to you, so I will send it to circuit court. Uh, are we done here? Are we done here? Are we done here? Short started to shout. Eventually, Mirable, the judge, muted the Zoom call and transferred the suit to the circuit court. The judge, uh, yeah, so it was transferred to the Seventh Circuit Court after being dismissed from the from the main court. Uh, this isn't the first time Short has filed lawsuits that have been dismissed. According to information from the Michigan District Court and Circuit Court, she has filed at least a dozen lawsuits in both court jurisdictions over the past two decades. In one, she filed a $300 million lawsuit against the Flint Police Department. She also filed a lawsuit against AT&T in October. Uh, and when she failed to appear for it, the case was tossed. So there you go. Imagine it. Imagine like you book a date, you don't show, and you have to go to court. Ten thousand dollars of damages. Please. I mean, by the sound of it, but you probably made the right choice to dodge it. Like, <laughs> probably shouldn't have gone to that date. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, fuck knows. <laughs> maybe it's maybe there's like a worse outcome if you yeah. turn up. Holy moly! But that's what I mean. It's like there's just so many. Like, how can anyone be asked to get to know anyone else? <laughs> I know it sounds mental, but how can anyone be asked? How can people in this day and age be asked to make new friends? Like, why would you risk it? There's just there's just nutters and fucking you know, just malicious actors everywhere. Like, just I, 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 don't, I don't know where I'm going with this, but just stay indoors. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Just don't. Just stay indoors. Don't DM anyone. Don't message anyone. Don't talk to anyone. Uninstall all your apps. Get off Twitter. You know, just like, just isolate yourselves, guys. It's the only way. It's the only way to be sure. Because I'd, I'd have gone fucking mental. Like, I, I watched the video. Like, I know I read the transcript there, but like, I'd have gone fucking, like, I don't know how that guy's kept it together. Like, he's so funny in it as well. He's like, literally like, I just thought this would be. <laughs> I don't know why this is happening. Like, he just looks so fucking bewildered. Like, what a nightmare. Fuck that. Right. Uh, bit of crime news, Sam. I know you like crime news. Uh, here you go. You'll appreciate this one. We, we, we <laughs> this is the manhunt that is on uh, for a man accused of smashing plates of whipped cream into people's faces. Like actual plates, but mm -hmm. well, I, I mean, ceramic look, plates. Like if you look at the picture, like that does look like a ceramic does plate, look like doesn't he it? He looks landed to be doing. <laughs> Oh, I know, I'm not gonna even oh, yeah, uh, full lap. He like It's <laughs> like somebody's gonna get I mean it's funny now, but let's find out how hard he was yeah, no, no. plates like, as, he, like, as he broke the notes. We laughed at we laughed at the Joker from Nottingham and then he like nearly killed someone with a ball and ball, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you have to like anyway. Said it there's a serial attacker on the loose in South Carolina and his weapon of choice is whipped cream. Police said they are hunting a man who started randomly smashing people in the face 
That's the thing as well. Like, like it doesn't sound like because here's the thing. Like, I've got enough of a sense of humor that even if, right, I honestly think I don't know. You, you're gonna say there's no way. But if I was walking down the street and like someone come up and put like a whipped cream in my face with a paper plate and went like, ah, I got you or whatever, I, I could sort of like, I don't nah, know. That's just snap. like a. I don't think <laughs> yeah, I, you'd snap. I don't think you'd so. Snap. Like, I, think, I think I could laugh about that. You like snap. you know. I might start carrying a water <laughs> pistol, like, so I, yeah, we can all have fun, you know. Like, it's just it's like a random, it's a random happening. Like I can. I don't know what I do, but I'd be so surprised. I, like, what do we? But like, you just go dick, dickhead. Or and then sort of laugh do about you? It, I don't know. Like, I don't know. It depends what kind of mood I'm in. Like you what can't, what... you can't batter someone over with. That's you. what I mean. What do you do? Like yeah. just uppercut them. That doesn't seem reasonable either, does it? No, I guess I'd like chase after them. Grab them and just rub myself all over them. I think that would be my. That, that's just in between. Rub all the cream all over their back. Sam right? Davies is facing sex <laughs> yeah, crime exactly. charges. He yeah, covered exactly. me in cream, your honor. Yeah. I was rubbing it off. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, mate. Sounds like an excuse uh, that was going around the BBC. In the 80s, <laughs> that, I'll be, I'll be very careful. No, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't, th I don't think that would break me. Like, I don't think that would be. It. But if you smashed me in the face, that's what I mean. Yeah, but plate, that's why I'd have to put it on him. A, but yeah, if yeah, he's like course. smashing a real plate over you, breaking your nose, covering you in cream, and oh, then yeah, running yeah. away, like, come on, but let me cream pie you back. You know what I mean? Let it be even, but yeah, then well, I wouldn't feel as aggrieved. It, here it is, a surveillance image. That's the one where he's absolutely landed. Like a surveillance <laughs> image released by police showed the grinning suspect leaning up against the wall as he held a plate in one hand and a can of ammo in the other. Uh, one of his targets was a woman. See, this is where it already gets naughty. Like one of his targets was a woman who was pushing her child in a stroller. Yes, got, like, it, throw the book at him. Throw the book at him. Like straight to jail. Straight to jail. Uh, that incident, which cops are treating as an assault, unfolded at about 2.30pm near the Main Street Bridge in Greensville. Police said they have received multiple reports of similar incidents. <laughs> How many people has he got? Man? I don't know, mate. He's just out there, and he's fucking out there living I his movie. Know, look like, at that picture. I think maybe it is a paper plate. Like, cause, uh, no, because if it was, I had no thing or two about putting food on paper plates on me. Yeah, but it's like, only a bit of creep, and there has got a little bit of bend in nah, it. There's a little bit no, of bend in it. But... But if there's bend in it, it can't be ceramic. I'm not really, I swear bend. there's a bit of I'm bend I'm rejecting the bend. I'm rejecting the bend. I think you're imagining the bend. To know, I mean, listen for practicality's sake. Obviously, it makes sense. It's, it's a paper plate. Oh, yeah. you've got to disp you know dispose of the evidence easier as well, I suppose, because he knows it's a crime. Don't he? So I don't know, but uh, maybe I mean, listen also as well the idea of smashing a ceramic plate in someone's face. Like, yeah, that'd be a lot more like, aggro. Like <laughs> that's what I mean. I feel like if it was a ceramic, they would have brought it up, but because they do seem to be pushing this a bit hard, like. Like, actually, I mean, they've put in one of his targets to a woman who's pushing a child. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking, like, maybe that's someone he knew, but if he was, then she probably wouldn't have went to the police, would she? So. Probably. But, probably. <laughs> you know I mean? <laughs> might, have been, might have been that woman from the past story. Like, you know, <laughs> no one's getting a pass with her. Uh, anyway, animal news. <laughs> Not seagulls. Um, I, I I saw this story. I thought this is a Sam story. Sam Sam likes stories like this, but this involves absurdity, but also just blatant lies, right? So this is uh, a lion in a Chinese zoo uh, went viral because people take pictures of it and had this ridiculous fringe. It looks like fucking Liam Gallagher, but <laughs> right. <laughs> The zookeepers denied of giving it a haircut. Like, I'm like, what do you mean? There's no way that's going in like, natural. Yeah, what, you got George you know, Harrison back from the dead yeah, as exactly, a fucking like, yeah. lion? Yeah, George Best's come back, boys. Like, he's, everyone's living the dream. Anyway, this is a lion that was residing at Guangzhou Zoo right, uh, that went viral for sporting a strange hairstyle. The lion's mane appeared to have taken on the shape of a choppy fringe over its forehead uh more chinese citizens shared the pictures of this bizarre lion cut i don't know why there's a picture of joe exotic <laughs> that's what they said he looks like that <laughs> that's too we can't say that especially given yeah come on 
he's in jail for cruelty to animals. Well, and he was trying to have Karen Baskin assassinated. Like, <laughs> yeah, for no that reason. one as like, well. But yeah, there was that, like, yeah. That was entrapment, mate. You shouldn't have gone down for that. <laughs> I li- listen, all I'm saying is just like free, free Joe. That's all I'm saying. Like, anyway, um, one netizen questioned if the lion was very docile or if the zookeepers felt particularly brave uh, for giving this lion a haircut. Uh, but in response to queries, uh, a Guangdong media outlet, uh, an employee at the zoo clarified zookeepers would never dare give a lion a haircut. And this hairstyle is due to humidity. <laughs> There's no way, but That fringe is too perfect, but they put a bowl on his head. How can that go Yeah, like for real. Yeah, give no a way. lion a bowl cut. Like. Yeah, yeah. There's no way, like. Put it this way, man. I, and also, they... have you noticed in all these pictures, they're asking if he's docile. His eyes aren't opening any of them, but can't, can't even open his oh, eyes, but he's like half yeah. asleep walking around. But look, this one, yeah. this one looks yeah, tired as well, but it's chilling. Right, yeah. That one, yeah, he just looks right. out the villa. Like, oh, look at him, man. I feel bad for him. He does look fucked. Yeah, up. no, you're right. Like, this is like... Look, when... at none of these pictures, but I know some of yeah, them are repeating. Yeah. His but... eyes aren't open. Like, his yeah, eyes aren't open once. Like, oh yeah, they're fully, they've dosed him, like. Unless there's a chance it's like a blind lion and that's where they have him here, some sort of sanctuary, maybe that's a thing. But... Well, I think they would have mentioned that in the fucking right so, up, right? Like... But I mean, yeah, it looks like he has got no eyes. Like, it's mad. Like, yeah, I mean. Unless they've literally just so happened to catch a blink in every single photo. Because, like, look. I mean, that does happen sometimes, don't it? You know what it's like yeah. when you're having a night out. <laughs> like, you know. That's all I mean, in the I, wild. I, that's all right, like, you think about cut. big cats have big cats have to have their eyes open all the time because they're always you know like so yeah they've dosed him like I bet I, I bet me left nut on it they've fucking dosed him they've been giving him some of that fucking lean and f- lion lean and just fucking gone in and just giving him a shit haircut like it's like you're the <laughs> you're the first guy to fall asleep at the party like you know what I mean that's <laughs> uh, so fucking bad like and then to deny it and say oh zookeepers would never be brave enough yeah because you fucking dosed him. You fucking drugged him up real nice, like. You would draw it on his face and take pictures yeah, of it. exactly, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you lift up his friend, there's a knob on his forehead. <laughs> it's fucking hell. What are they done? Like, it's so, I can't believe it. To deny it as well, like, I've ne- put it this way. I've look- I've been looking at lions for years, Sam. <laughs> I've been looking, like, think of how many lions you've actually seen yeah. in your life, right? On telly pictures books when you're a kid never seen a lion with an haircut like that no i've never no seen once that. never occurred in nature once never, never seen a beetle in the zoo lion once. like it. yeah exactly like it's absolute grade a bullshit like wow well, what a shower of cunts today <laughs> <laughs> bust out the way it's just cover that bastard man yeah, it's fair like uh now we can get into science news because uh, there's been some strange headlines in the world of uh, science. Uh, it just shows you how, and I, just to demonstrate how bad science reporting actually is, you'll you'll appreciate this story as well, Sam. This is a very Sam show. Like this is like your sense of humour. So, a French. This is the headline: A top scientist admits that a space telescope image was actually a slice of chorizo. Right? Yeah. <laughs> You can see it there if you scroll down. You can see the tweet. You see it there. But Look. yeah, but this, the way they've painted it, but as if he was trying to like lie to people. There's no way he did that yeah. as a joke, right? I mean, I'm looking at it, but you didn't have to tell me. But yeah, 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 exactly. Like, but he says he did tweet out that it is a photo of Proxima Centauri, the closest star to the sun, <laughs> located 4.2 light years from us. Uh, this level of detail, a new world is revealed day after day. Then when he did a uh, follow-up tweet, he said, um, uh, it's time for the aperitif um, because cognitive bias seems to have a field day. Beware beware of them. According to contemporary cosmology, no object belonging to Spanish charcuterie exists anywhere but on Earth. So he did later admit that. Yeah, he has just goofed you, like. But like people, people were just uncritically repeating it and sharing <laughs> it. And the thing is, like, I I don't know, like, because obviously I know it's a chorizo, right? I know it is, and it looks like a delicious slice of chorizo. Like, it really does. You can see the paprika and yeah, the fat. Yeah, you can see Yeah, makes you want it, right? But obviously, like, if you just present, if a scientist just presented it to me and said, 
will you look at this? We look at Proxima Centauri. I don't know if I'd be fooled, like, you know, because I, I don't know. I've, I've never really looked through a telescope, you know? No, I, 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 might, I, I can even that... see where, like, it's, it looks like he's photoshopped around the edge. You can see, like, the white around the edge of the image. But, like, I, I think I'd figure out that's a treat. So, like, I mean, obviously, now I've been yeah. told there's no way to know. But I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like... exactly. You can never know if yeah, you'd be one exactly. of the idiots now. It's easy to sit here and go, Yeah, now I know. <laughs> yeah, 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 but exactly. But, like, I like to think, I'm like you. I like to think that I would have gone, like, put it this way, it, I wouldn't because also he it said, looks like a treat. Like, he said it's the nearest... Uh, star to the sun, right? Isn't that what the translation was? Yes. Yeah, the nearest yeah. star to the sun. So there's no way the old background be black, but that's not really, what you know what I mean. I don't think what, that's how it works. What if, what if the telescope has a special, like you know? I don't know. Maybe, maybe it would be. I don't know. Like a telescope. It's chorizo, but I, 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 yeah, I can't no, it look, is. I, I mean, can't look past all, you know. We are overanalyzing that it is a chorizo, like, but uh, but it, and it is anyway. I'll, I'll I'll read you the story. A French scientist has apologized. Right? <laughs> As if he'd have to come out and say apology. sorry, like uh, after tweeting a photo of a slice of chorizo, claiming it was an image of a distant star taken by the James Webb Space Telescope. Etienne Klein, a celebrated physicist and director at France's Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission, by the way. Don't don't cancel this guy. We're gonna we're gonna need him. Like hundred yeah. percent. Like, don't cancel this guy. Shared the image of the spicy Spanish sausage on Twitter <laughs> last week, praising the level of detail it provided. Uh, then it reads the tweet. The post was retweeted and commented upon thousands of users <laughs> by thousands of users who took the scientist that is word. Things, however, were not quite as they seemed. The deception. Klein admitted later in a series of follow-up tweets that the image was, in fact, a close-up of a slice of chorizo <laughs> taken against the black background. Um, after facing a backlash from members of the online community for his prank, he wrote, in view of certain comments... <laughs> I mean, he's apologising for chorizo! I can't believe this is the world we live in. In view of certain comments... I feel obliged to specify that this tweet showed an alleged picture of Proxima Centauri, and it was a joke. Let's learn to be wary of the arguments from positions of authority as much as the spontaneous eloquence of certain images. On Wednesday, Klein apologised for the hoax, saying his intention was to urge caution regarding images that sink to speak. No, it wasn't, but you were just making a joke. You haven't got to go that far, but to say, goof. I took a yeah, picture of a fucking chorizo, but what's wrong with it? Why have you got... That's mad. In a bid to make amends, he posted an image of the spectacular cartwheel galaxy, assuring followers that this time the photo was genuine. So he made up for it. In the end, he made up for his sausage-related banter. <laughs> okay, no. Yep. Uh, then I saw this fact check, right? <laughs> you know I love a good fact check. Known for that. Uh, check this one out. <laughs> Absolute madness. Um... Okay, uh, this is on USA Today. S fact check. Scientists at CERN are not opening a portal to hell. You'll be pleased <laughs> to know. You'll be pleased to know. You'll be pleased to know that that fucking Large Hadron Collider. Super Collider, yeah. yeah. They're not opening a portal to hell, Sam. Now that that's... I mean, there is a very small chance that they open a black hole, right? Depending on what they do. And I remember that was the whole talk when it first yeah. happened. There was like a zero point zero 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 one percent chance you could make a black hole. Yeah. yeah, but I've heard you know people say all this crazy shit. It was like you know you have to understand why I'm always skeptical, like because the whole point of this little segment of the show is, you know, I'm very much in line with Etienne Klein, like scientific reporting like journalism sucks ass you know i won't get into that on this podcast i won't pollute it with that but you know the 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 way they handle scientific reporting in the mainstream media it's like basically it's like it's no it's no better than if it was like you or me down a pub after 10 pints trying to explain astrophysics to each other you know what i mean yeah. like we might understand some of the broad you know aspects of it but we're not fully qualified scientists. And so what always ends up happening is, like, take for example, because I'm obviously old enough to remember when the um, Millennium Bug was going to literally, I, I mean, 
we'll have to do an episode of that, like a, a, a retrospective. I hear. I don't even get. You're on about like fucking Y two K, right? To the year two thousand. Yeah, Y two K. Yeah. Where they yeah. thought it, all the computer systems were going to fail because it was yeah. going from nineteen ninety nine. Just because of the clock but on why, all the operating systems. Yeah. Why? Why would? Why would that? Mate, be... I shit you not. I what? shit you not. If you watched the news at that time. You you would have thought your house was gonna come to life and kill you, like. But it, like, it was, so, was, it was this? So I assume this wasn't tech companies, right? Tech companies were coming out and saying, "Yep, it's gonna shut the world down." Surely they come out and said, "We did account no, for calendars." Did. Like, no, <laughs> like no, surely. What I mean, you know, some operating systems actually hadn't, and 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 this was the thing they were gonna have to roll out like huge new updates, and it was like uh, how apparently, though? how do you not account for like ten years in the future? Listen, you know I me. Mean? It's not like we had computers in 1836 and we didn't account for it. Yeah, yeah. We, this like the computer came out in '94 and they hadn't accounted for 2000. Yeah, I How mean, you know, it? It, yeah, it's it's a, it's a wild one, right? Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I was there. I was like, uh, I think we're gonna be all right, guys. Uh, trust me. I, I think we're gonna be okay. But like, there was some like legitimate angst and legitimate fears around the uh fucking you know millennium bug and like some of the reports i saw at that time were just insane because what they would do is they would get like one one computer scientist right and they would say something like well obviously if the operating system were to fail right you know if it was yeah. to get a critical error then this thing would happen and then the news would go y2k bug will make thing happen and that's that's where you end up, right? But what do so, they? What can you remember an example of what? Yeah, they thought planes would falling out of the sky. <laughs> but, Literally couldn't happen in any way, shape, or form. That Hang on, let me show you. Why? Me show you that. Like, uh, like the I, autopilot I, doesn't I, run on a clock, yeah. but the autopilot <laughs> runs on some sort of GPS, like, and an altimeter system, surely. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Yeah. Storycast 21, planes falling out the sky and nuclear reactors shutting down. How the Y2K bug spread fear across the world. It was it was it was a legit thing people thought was gonna happen. Like I, I you know, I'm like you, mate. I don't fucking know why anyone would fucking assume that like you, you're just on a plane, you know, and it's like 10, 9, 8, you know, you're spending New Year's Eve on a flight, you're already having a bad time. You know, yay! And then it's just uh, unfortunately all operating systems have <laughs> shut down, including the including the engines. There's no manual override. Uh, we're going down, smoke if you got them. <laughs> Couldn't they have just reset the calendar to ninety one and gone again? Like obviously the days would be out, but ooh, the times the same. So that's the most important thing. If it's if it's in like a nuclear reactor and you need it to shut off on Sundays for whatever, then you just change it to what a new Sunday is, surely. Oh, yeah, oh, but mate, honestly, people were going fucking mental. There was like, as you can see here as well, they were saying, um, "Oh, maximum security prisons, all the locks will open." <laughs> that was another one. That was another like mad feel like time expired. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there is no more time. We exist outside of time, therefore sentences meaningless. Click. And all the prisoners were gonna get out and kill us all while in our beds, like uh, come up and shank us all. It was madness. It, it, it was madness. You know, it, it was it was weird as well, because I just you know, at the time that was happening, I was like the editor of a, you know, magazine. And uh I, I, I remember, like, just being, like, blown away by the media. It, it's probably the first thing that really got me dialed in on fear-mongering as a concept in the media, you know, because I'm studying it, I'm, I'm I'm editing a magazine, and I'm watching the news, and it was just so, it was, it was unbelievable. And again, it's not just the fear-mongering as a, as a mechanic, you know, as, you know, as a means to get you hooked into the media. But also as well, it, all of it predicated on ignorance, right? All of it. Just literally like, we asked the computer scientist, is this disaster theoretically possible? And they said, yeah, it's theoretically possible. <laughs> there you Shit. go. And that, yeah, and, and boom. And that's and that's often what they go with. It's the same, you know, you probably read all them studies, right? Like uh, study shows. Uh, and it'll be like, study shows actually burnt bacon cures cancer. And you'll be like, what the fuck? And it'll be like some... They've done some study to see if carcinogens actually are as bad as what they say they are. And then, you know, or actually the findings are inconclusive or uh, as an aberration in this, you know, non-double blind, you know, peer reviewed paper from a college. Uh, actually, the, the test 
the test subjects got cancer less. And then they'll, that's the lurid headline. Cure was kind of, doesn't cure it. What the fuck are you talking about? They do shit like that all the time. All the time with like wonder drugs, right? Wonder drug is another word you'll see all the time in like newspapers. Wonder drug. And it'll be like, it's done its first clinical trial in rats and it showed a marginal uptick. There's like a long way to go. It's not a fucking wonder drug yet. You know, and so scientific reporting is a nightmare. Now, why why USA Today took it upon themselves to fact check <laughs> this entire write-up? It's like, don't get me wrong. They must have a sense of humor about it, but but, but it's, it's just so mental. It's just such a mental thing to write down. Right. Scientists at CERN are not opening a portal to hell. The claim. Scientists at CERN are communicating with demonic entities. <laughs> And are opening a portal to hell. Have you ever seen that claimed anywhere? Nah. Because apparently... Have you heard about a opening a portal to another universe or a black hole? Have you heard that? Like... Yeah, I've heard, I'm on that multiverse shit. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. Because I watched... Um, this is a while back now. I watched the Joe Rogan podcast where he had uh, the lead... Uh, the scientist... Oh, what's his name now? Bob Lazar? No, not him. The one who's the leading authority on Magic Mushrooms. Oh, um... Is it Sam Gallet? It's something like that. Can't remember. Well, anyway, basically, like he's written every book imaginable on. If if you have a book that's like explaining all the different genus of psilocybin mushrooms, it's him who wrote it. And he he was on a Joe Rogan podcast, and he said he he took mushrooms one time and went and but keep in mind he's like a sixty five year old scientist or something, and so you know who's who is an expert in his field, you know an expert in his field, uh, but obviously for research purposes he was eating mushrooms, and he said um, he said like he doesn't give a fuck. He says I don't care if people think I'm like a nutcase or I've took too many drugs or whatever, but I believe I went into the multiverse. And he told this story about um, the right he, he him and his friends discovered this like outbreak uh, of magic mushrooms right uh and it was it was down it was like literally just around the corner from a police station and it had happened on a mulch pile right like okay. that, that, in, in just like a disused yard right and it was all like trash everywhere and everything but they had this like super bloom like tens of thousands of this and the thing the mad thing was it wasn't even a type of magic mushroom that had been discovered before They'd known it had existed for like three years, but they'd never seen a bloom in this like quantity and it had never been studied. So not only did he study, not only did they find next to a police station all these magic mushrooms, it was also like a new genus of magic mushroom that they hadn't sort of, uh, what's the term, classified, right? Yeah. So anyway, they went there in the dead of night, got all the mushrooms, uh, and then they weren't as potent as... Uh, uh, normal mushrooms, the, the standard ones. Um, they, they were about a fifth of the dose, so they had to take big doses to get to trip, right? And so he said they made these huge, like, mushroom smoothies, which were, like, Sounds gross. Rancid. Oh, yeah, I mean, for those who've never done mushrooms, like, there's a... The the tea is the best way to go, generally. Imagine a mushroom like, with that celery aftertaste, but that aftertaste ten times worse. And and mate, and if they've been dried out a while, they get that. It's like the blue cheese taste. Yeah, it's like, like a, a funk. Oh yeah. It's a basically funk. It tastes like aftershave to me, but that's what it tastes like to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're really hard to get down. And and and, and psilocybin makes you nauseous anyway, as uh, most um, you know psychedelics do. Uh, anyway, so he he they made these massive smoothies and like they they choked them down. And then he said he 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 sat there. And he had a great trip and uh, bonded with all his fellow scientists, fully loved up out of his mind. And then he went to bed and he was lying there. And, he, you know, you, you, when you close your eyes, your eyes don't really close. You just see everything and all the colours and the vast expanse of the universe. And bow, 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 he just fucking out of it. And he said uh, he had a vision while he was, like, tripping. And it was like, he said he saw, uh, like, hundreds of, like, dead cows in a field. Hundreds of dead cows in a field. And uh, he couldn't explain why would all, why would all these cows be dead in the field? Like why did I see that? So he, next day he wakes up, he's like coming down. He told them all. He had this like mad vision. It was super real. Though. It was like a lucid dream. And uh, there was all these dead cows in the field. You know. And um, and the only thing I can think of because this was like the late seventies. Said the only thing I can think of is that it's nuclear war. 
Uh, we've got Reagan in the White House, you know, fundamentalist Christian type. Uh, ten, you know, it's going to be a nuclear war, so the world's going to end. And and they were going, well, when, when was it in your vision, you know? And he said, oh, it's like uh, I think it must be next weekend. He just said arbitrarily. Yeah. Why so they were, all, I don't know. So they were just joking, right? And they marked it on the calendar and said, oh, he says the world's going to end on this date, you know. And so anyway. Uh, while they were waiting for the world to end, uh, there was like an extreme adverse like weather thing that happened while they were there, and it was rain, like loads and loads of rain, all the flood banks had popped, you know, and so he got stranded at his house, you know, for like a couple of days, he couldn't take the car out or nothing, water everywhere, everywhere everywhere's flooded. Anyway, so after two days, he came out of his house, and he was walking down, you know, past the fields and everything where he lived. And one of the flood banks had gone into a cattle field and all the cows had, had died. And there was hundreds of dead cows in the field. And he yeah, says... I'm not impressed, I, but... He said he thinks he went into like a multiverse situation where there's like a time dilation thing occurred when he got to see like the time folded and he got to see... Oh, like, he was future. just gangster tripping, but and saw a load of dead shit in the field. <laughs> and then it just so happened coincidentally that there was a flood and a load of cows died. Who knows, man? That's on the level of, like, religious people saying that, you know, I was given a miracle, I prayed for ice cream the next day, I found no five bats. pound. Yeah, exactly. So it's yeah. one of them to me, but I give our no credence. It's a bit specific, like. Nah, it's not, but fucking floods happen dead all the time. Cows. Yeah, but he doesn't even know, but I bet he probably saw dead everything, but he was so gangster trip, and he just said, I remember dead cows. Yeah, he probably saw dead everything, but there's probably fields of dead everything. You just gangster That's tripping, normal, but man. you had you had a creepy trip that he thought everything in the world had ended, and it just so happened. And also, if it's around the corner from him, that means he sees those cows all the time. So that's probably why he saw them. He always sees those cows in his mind. Oh my god, the cows are dead! I never thought you would denounce nah, come on, that, that's not being silly, the secret but... of time travel. I mean, I'm not denouncing it, but I'm not taking that in evidence. Like one guy oh, seeing the evidence. dead cows. Yeah, no, no. Listen, Sam, I trust the science, and I would need a bit more than that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but anyway, back to back to the demons. So apparently, it was some woman on a TikTok video, and she said, um, "If y'all don't know about CERN, <laughs> that just buckled me right out the gate. If y'all don't know about CERN, it's a demonic evil machine." That opens up portals to other dimensions, like hell and other spiritual worlds, but not heaven or the bosom of Abraham. And it mm. brings in demons and wicked spirits and high evil principalities. High evil principalities. Now, why why is a mainstream media publication fact-checking yeah, one woman on TikTok? But here's the thing, like... It must have popped off on TikTok, otherwise they wouldn't be doing it. Yeah, but like, listen, though, listen... They they don't it, look look what they say here. Uh uh the 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 um similar posts have amassed hundreds of interactions on Facebook and Twitter, but the claim is baseless. <laughs> no shit. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, there is no evidence. Scientists at CERN are engaged in anything other than scientific related activities. Right, they, this article is making me believe it more than if I just seen it. But well, the know. way they're addressing they're bit, it is so strange. Touchy, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, a bit, bit touchy, aren't you? Like, just let it slide you. A yeah, bit <laughs> let it slide. It it's so one serious. mad woman on TikTok. Like, yeah, exactly. There is no but evidence mate, to indicate anything other than scientific experiments. No, but look, they put this bit in bold. Physics experts told USA Today scientists use the Large Hadron Collider to collide particles at very high energy so they yeah. can study matter. Yeah, yeah. US, and, and then, right, um, it, uh, th there's a headline, Collider can't open portals, right? <laughs> there is no truth to the claim that scientists at CERN are communicating with demonic entities and using the Collider to open up a portal to hell. Dejan Stoikovich, a physics professor at the University of Buffalo, told USA Today in an email, to create a black hole or a wormhole, even microscopic ones, with our current technology, in the context of our standard theories of gravity, we would need an accelerator as big as the whole universe, oh, there we go. Stoikovich said. So there is no chance whatsoever to create such a portal at the Large Hadron Collider. See, I'm still believing the old myth, but with the old 0.0001. Yeah. There you go. I knew it would be wrong. It's always wrong.
Uh, since these are previously unexplored energies in a controlled environment, we might expect production of some new elementary particles that we did not know if they existed. However, these are microscopic particles, so there is no chance such a particle well, will open. I don't think we say no chance, but I mean, I'm not a scientist. I do respect that you're probably in the large icon collider. I'm not. But you just said there's a chance we uh, discover pro, uh, we discover things that we didn't even know exist. So if you don't know they exist, how do you know what they do? But uh, let's be real. You don't. It's not no chance, is it? It's, there isn't no chance. It's a little bit of a chance, like. Professor Davies refutes Professor Stoker. I do. Like, theory I do. Had, yeah. Um. And then they asked another one, right? They've gone all in on this, like they've they've hit up every physicist in America saying, uh, "It's not really." Uh, can you tell us that there's no hell portals in, uh, in at CERN, please? Right? Uh, Joshua Ruderman, associate professor of physics at New York, told USA Today in an email, "The collider is essentially a particle creation machine and a particle discover machine." Uh, for example. Uh, in 2012, the Collider made headlines after discovering the Higgs boson particle, which was a finding key to understanding the creation of the universe. Our rating, false. <laughs> Look at what they actually do a write-up of what. We believe it is false. There is no evidence that they are communicating with demonic entities <laughs> and opening in a portal to hell. <laughs> so I'm glad you've done it for me, but I am going to research now. It's so like what this is how busted media is with it. Like or you're fact checking a crazy woman on TikTok. Like here's the other thing I heard as well. They should have fact checked this one. Nah, I noticed they didn't. Must be true then, eh? Right? That's the problem of fact checking. You know, if you don't fact check all everything that's wrong, then you you know, well, what about the ones you don't? Are they right? See the problem. Anyway, uh there was another theory that actually every time they spin the uh, the Hadron Super Collider thing. Uh, it puts us in an alternate timeline and we don't know about it. Yeah. And we're stuck. I mean, uh, you, well, you, you, I just you, remember, you I just got a book off my thing, which this might mean I'm a part of fucking Big Demon, but I've got a book called Neutrino, which is written by Frank Claus OB, who is a professor of physics of, U of Oxford. Uh, mm. Hang on, let me get to it. And he also had also the head of theoretical physics division at the laboratory and head of communications and public educations at CERN. So I've been brainwashed, mate. Maybe, maybe I've just been uh, in on the information too early, and they brainwashed me to see the truth. But I remember reading. When did I get this book? I remember reading this when I was a kid. So it must have been outrageous. But yeah, this is all about the Hadron Collider and what they initially thought they could discover. Yeah, maybe, maybe big demon. Big demon, mate. They've got me in early. <laughs> oh fuck me, big demon. <laughs> All right then. Well, I'll end. I'll end on one. Uh, we'll end this uh, episode on a shocking bombshell, Sam. This will blow your mind. More science news. Uh, this was the CNN report. Uh, it's going to shock you. Their findings. Uh, this was the study that apparently legalizing recreational cannabis increases its use. <laughs> <Research> no <yours>. shit. <laughs> You even believe they bothered with you could have paid you could have given me a 10 bag and i've told you this like you didn't have to do a study on it what are you talking about they literally did a study people in the u.s states that legalize recreational cannabis use it 20 percent more frequently than those in states that didn't legalize it a study published thursday in the journal of addiction has suggested yeah obviously obviously because most people don't want to break the law yeah and also right? i'd assume how are they getting the numbers because is it just yeah. more people are admitting to it now that it's legal? Like, maybe yeah. they didn't want to tell you when it was illegal. I'm telling you, scientific report, and I guarantee that study's, like, just, you know, fraught with all sorts of, like, caveats. Because, you know, they're good at their end, the scientists and the people yeah, doing They list every the bias answer. and every... Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, and it's all there, and look, it's got, mate, it's got fucking formulas and all sorts on it. You know, I, I don't even know what that means. Like, as soon as you start putting letters next to numbers, my fucking eyes <laughs> file not fucking found. You know what I mean? Well, like, at the end of the day, like, fucking obviously, there's going to be loads of biases, and this is not going to be an accurate number for the following reasons. They list it all. CNN just coming straight out here, like, yeah, do you know if, like, if you don't go to prison for an unreasonably long time for smoking a plant, more people might try smoking that plant. Yeah, fuck me. You've cracked the case, Serpico. Well done. So there you go. That's it, Sam. That's Sounds all good. the news. So I guess it's time to wrap up. 
Uh, I have to do my little sign off. I keep forgetting to do it. We also stopped doing the bongs, didn't we? At the start, the bong. Yeah. Bong. It was a bit much work, though, yeah. for not much payoff, wasn't it? So, a bit long. Whatever. But anyway, that was I Hate Here. That was the news. We wish it wasn't. See you next time. Bye.